Today's topic is shift registers. So, what is a shift register? Well, first, what's a register? So a register, it would just be a set of memory cells that we use to hold on to certain values and usually would differentiate that from just a place in RAM, say, or just regular memory, is that it's usually within maybe the, the CPU or the microcontroller, uh, the core, and it's a place where you can basically save intermediate results and then bring them back in and, you know, so it's working memory basically within the central processing unit. So it could just be, you know, a set of E flip flops, for example. Three of them here. And you'd have your D inputs and Q outputs. And yeah, let's make four. Nice and round. Maybe this is, these all represent bits of one particular number. Two, D3, D2, D1, and D0. And then we can latch them into these few outputs, right? And then maybe we'll call this A3, A2, A1, and A0. All right, so that would be a four bit register. Now to make it a shift register, what we want it to do is to take on each clock cycle, each rising edge, take say the A0 value, and move it over here to the A1, take the A1, move it to the A2, the A2, move it to the A3, the A3 could go somewhere else or just go away, right? That would be a shift register. Why would we want to shift the bits contained in a register? Well, to motivate it, we can look at process of multiplication. So in a previous lecture, we looked at um, using adders and other uh, logic combined with, with several adders to make a multiplier, what would in principle be an instantaneous multiplier, we might call it a flash multiplier. Uh, we got up to three bits by three bits, and that was a pretty complicated circuit. And if you tried to make something that could multiply 64 bits by 64 bits or something like that, it would be really, really, really uh, a difficult circuit to design, very complicated. So especially to multiply large, numbers, numbers with many digits, we most likely would use the technique for multiplication we learned in elementary school, or grade school, rather, probably. So let's say we want to multiply 314 uh, by 121. So the way we learn to do that is we go down to the second factor and we start with the least significant digit, that's this one, and multiply that times the first factor. So we'd have one times four is four, one times one is one, one times three is three. Then we go to the next most significant digit. And now we have a two, two times three, 14. But this two actually represents 20, right? Because it's, it's in the tens place. So to add in that mul extra multiplication by 10, we do is we have to shift the result that we write down. So now we're going to do 2 times 3, 14. 2 times 4 is 8. It's actually in the tens place, so it really represents 20 times 4 is 80. Okay. Then 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 times 3 is 6. Then we go over here to this 1, and that's actually in the hundreds place. We're going to have to shift twice. There's one shift, two shifts, and then do 1 times 3, 14. 1 times 4 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3 and add all of those intermediate partial products together. Four, and the, these arrows, this really represent blanks or zeros. So four plus zero is four. One plus eight is nine. Three plus two is five plus four is nine. Six plus one is seven. And three plus zero is three. So this is 37,994. All right, now that process applied to binary numbers uh, is very elegant because one of the 
tricky things about doing multiplication with decimal numbers is you got to memorize your your multiplication table. You need to know the product of all digits 0 to 9 with all other digits from 0 to 9. Well, for binary numbers, you, there are only two digits, 0 and 1. So your multiplication table is trivial. You're either multiplying by 0, which is 0, or by, by 1, which is just the number. So let's say we were going to calculate the product of, in binary, 101, which would represent 4 plus no 2s plus 1, 5 times 1, 1, 0, which is 4 plus 2 is 6. 5 times 6 is 30, and 30 is 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 and no once. 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. And so this represents 5 times 6 is equal to 30. Okay, let's uh, go through this grade school process with these binary numbers. Well, here we'll have 1, 0, 1 times 1, 1, 0. All right, so we start off with multiplying by zero. That's easy, and it's just all zeros. Then we come over here. Now this is, we've, we have to shift one place over, one times 101, so we just write down the 101, okay? We come over here, now we gotta shift twice. And again, we have a one, so one times 101. Now we add zero plus zero, zero, 0 plus 1 is 1, zeros plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, and 1 plus 0 is 1. 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. So indeed we get that 5 times 6 is 30 in binary notation. Notice the elegance of that. All we're doing is taking this first factor, and if it's being multiplied by 0, we don't add anything. If it's multiplied by 1, then we just add that number in. Then we shift it over, start at the 2's place, and if we're multiplying by zero, we wouldn't do any, wouldn't add anything in. We just get all zeros. If we're multiplying by one, then we just take that shifted version and add that in. Then we go over to the fours place, shift this again, and if it's a one, we're multiplying by. We add that in. If it's a zero, we, we don't, wouldn't have to do anything. So this is just a shift and add operation, and it makes binary multiplication very, very convenient, and it can be implemented with really relatively simple circuitry using the idea of a shift register. So to construct a shift register, we can use D flip-flops. So these will all have block input tied together so they're synchronized. We'll have data B inputs and Q outputs that are latched. And for the first um, flip flop, let's call its output uh, say A2. And that's where we're going to put in our serial data. This will be ones and zeros that go into that flip-flop. And of course, on the rising edge of the clock cycle, A2 will latch in whatever the current value of S is. Now to get those values then to shift to the left, we'll take that A2 value output and bring it down here and then put it in as the input to the next flip-flop. That output we'll call, say, A1. And then likewise, we can take that, go down here, call that output A0. And we could continue on with any number of flip-flops we'd want. So on the rising edge of this clock, this S value will get latched in here to A2. Now on the next rising edge, that previous S value that's currently in A2 will be the input to the next flip-flop and it'll get latched over here into A1. So the A2 value will shift over to A1. The new S value will go into A2. Then on the next rising edge of the clock, 
that A1 value will get shifted over to this A0, the A2 value over to the A1, and the S value will go into A2. And that would be then shift register. Now, in addition to doing multiplication, another really important application of shift registers is in serial communications. So, suppose we have four parallel bits. So, in a microcontroller or CPU, if it's a 32 bit microcontroller, for example, Generally, data will be moved around in parallel, uh, 32 bits at a time. So let's just say we have a 4-bit system. Draw. So we've got these 4 bits, A3 down to A0. And we want to communicate those from one, say, CPU, one computer, to another. And then we want to have those values come out here. A3, A2. A1 and A0. Now to do that directly, you would need to have four wires and a ground wire in order to communicate in parallel. And of course, if you had a 64-bit CPU, you'd need 64 wires, right? And that's okay within the computer. You'd have a 64-bit bus with 64 wires above a ground plane. But if you want to communicate over, say, a radio channel or over an ethernet cable, well, then you really only can communicate one bit at a time. And so what we do is we do here, we take data that's in parallel and we convert it to serial format, one bit at a time. Let's say we first send a zero, we send a one, then we send a two, then we send a three. Okay, so this now can be transmitted in serial. And then when it gets to the other device, we want to convert it back to parallel. Now we do a serial to parallel conversion. So like a USB, universal serial bus, is a, a example of this. Right? So where you are going to com communicate between the USB and, say, your computer that you plugged into uh, in a serial fashion. Uh, but internally, say it's a jump drive. In the jump drive, you're storing data in parallel and, you know, 8-bit bytes. And in the computer, you're transmitting uh, data, moving data around in, typically in 64-bit words. And then to communicate between them, you do this serial operation. So here you need to do parallel to serial and then at the other end, serial to parallel. All right, well, we kind of know how to do the serial to parallel. That's kind of what we talked about up here, right? Where we'd bring serial data in, and then we would just shift each clock cycle. We would shift the, the previous value in over in this chain of flip-flops, and then eventually we would end up with parallel data. So we'll call a serial to parallel converter a serial in parallel out register and the parallel to serial we'll call parallel in serial out. So the way this would look in terms of the clock and these different logic signals I suppose this is our clock And these are our rising edges. And let's suppose that our input signal starts off, is that a, a one? And then on this rising edge, it changes to a zero, and then goes back to one, then say stays as a one, like so. Okay, so it's one, zero, one, one. That is our serial input.
So let's say that the, as we had up here in this circuit here, the serial input gets first latched into the A2, or in this case where we have an A3, it would go into the A3. Oh, so this one on this rising edge gets latched in to A3. And then on the next rising edge, the zero gets latched into A3. And then the two ones, one after the other like this. So this would be A3. A3 would have the same sequence, one, zero, one, and one. Now, the A3 then feeds, right, and to the uh, A2 and so on, they cascade downwards. And so on this rising edge, there's an A3 value to be latched into A2. So it's going to be a 1, then 0, and then a 1. That could continue to go on, but we're going to stop here. Once this, this last of the four bits comes over to our, our serial to parallel converter, we're going to stop the process. Okay, so this will... We'll get a 1, a 0, and then it'll stop on 1 here. That'll be A2. And then for the A1, it'll be taking input from A2, and it'll be shifted over by one value, go 1, and then 0. Then A0 will be taking input from A1, and it'll be shifted over to a value of 1. And then we'll stop right here. Those will be our four parallel bits. Okay, so all the bits go through the A3 flip-flop. Only three, three of the bits go through the A2, only two through the A1, and only one gets to the A0. And we end up then with the four bits in parallel. So here we are in logic circuit. So let's see how this, this idea works out in practice. We've got four D flip-flops. Our serial in goes into the first one, becomes P3 for parallel three output. We've got clock signal distributed to all the flip-flops. And then these, just you just cascade from one at the P3 drives the P2, and the P2 drives P1, and P1 drives P0. So the value comes in and then just flows down this cascade. The first value that comes in just flows all the way down here to P0. The next one flows only down to P1. The third one in flows only to P2, and the last one in stays at P3. Now, of course, to run this in logic circuit, we have to define what the D flip-flop is. So we've got up here our D flip-flop circuit. Remember that from a previous lecture. And it's based on D latches. And so here's a, here are some, the D latch, which is now in terms of fundamental logic gates. Okay, so that's our starting point. That flip flop, and now we can make our serial in parallel out uh, circuit. Okay, so this is going to appear as a chip with two inputs, SI and clock, and four outputs, P3 down to P0. Here, let's test it. Here's a test circuit. Here's our two inputs and our four outputs. So let's start that up. Now, notice uh, we don't have a D flip flops with a clear signal. So they're going to initialize to, to random values. It doesn't really matter to us because all those random values would be shifted out. If we wanted to be a little cleaner about it, we could have put a clear signal in and had an initialization uh, step at the beginning. But see, if, if we just clock through this, these will, all those values will go away. All right, so let's suppose we're, our number is 1, 0, <clears throat> excuse me, 1, 1. And we're going we're gonna to first bring in the least significant bit. So we're going to go in the reverse direction. So we're going to have 1, 1, 0, 1 as our input. Okay, so 1 is the first bit coming in on the rising edge. That gets latched in here to P3. Then we, the next digit is another 1. So we have another clock cycle. Okay, so that first one shifted over to P2, and then the new input went to P3. Now the next digit is a zero. Here's our next cycle. That zero was latched into the P3 output. The, the former one that was in P3 went down to P2, and the one that was in P2 went down to P1. And then our final value is back to one. And there we go. And that latched in here. The other values cascaded down. 
and there's our value uh, that we wanted to get, which was 1011 from most significant to least significant bit. Okay. So indeed, that process works. That is your serial in parallel out. And again, this is, we're just looking at the simplest workable model here because we want to keep things uh, not too complicated. But probably in practice, we would want to have at least a clear signal just so that you know we can clear this this data out. Although again, as, as I mentioned, as long as you make sure you don't read this data until all of the data has been shifted in, it really wouldn't matter. Now let's consider the uh, parallel in serial out type of shift register. This one's a little more subtle. So what we need to do is First, load the parallel data, and then shift it out into the serial port, into the serial output. So first, let's see how we would load parallel data. Uh, we can do this with some flip-flops. straightforward idea where we have clock signals here acted together to get have everything be synchronized okay, so there's our clock input and then we have our D inputs and Q outputs. Let's put in here D3. Oops, not B3, D3. And our output, say, is P3. And an input D2. And an output P2. Input D1 and an output D1 input D0 and an output D0. Okay, so straightforward operation of this circuit. When we have a rising edge right, for the clock, then these D values get latched in and held as the output D values, okay? So that is just a parallel in parallel out register, which is just a normal register. You're just memorizing the input values and holding them on at the output. So now what we want to do is allow this circuit to operate in this fashion to latch onto these parallel input values, but then switch over to a situation where you're then doing this serial shifting where one value output value becomes the input value to the next flip-flop, et cetera. And we're gonna do this using multiplexer. Okay, so here's gonna be our, here's the symbol for the multiplexer. It has one Y output and uh, three inputs. And they're going to be S, E, and L. Here's the circuit. If you remember back when we talked about multiplexers, a, a two to one multiplexer is, is relatively simple. N gate here, N gate there. These feed to OR gate. So, and your Y value. One's inverted this input here, like so. There's our L, which is going to be a load signal. There's going to be an S, this is your serial in. And then P is going to be parallel in. So when L is equal to 1, what happens here? Uh, then this becomes 0. Right? This is just a shorthand for a NOT gate. So 0 and anything is 0, so this would become 0. 
And then this would be, L would be 1, 1 and P is just P, and then so Y would just be equal to P. And L is equal to 1. So L equals 1, Y equals P. When L is equal to 0, what happens? Well, now this is 0 and P, so this is 0. 0 or something is the, is the something. And then this would be L is 0, so not 0 would be 1. This would be 1 and S, which would just be equal to S then y is equal. All right, so the way we're going to hook this up then is going to look like, let's redraw these now, with each one having a uh, two to one multiplexer base here. So we can shift from loading the parallel data to shifting it out serial data. Okay. Now this block. Here are data inputs and outputs. And so these, these data inputs are going to come from a multiplexer, one of them. And the inputs to the multiplexers are going to be, well, this output here, which we'll call P3. It's going to go, remember the way we designed these multiplexers, they got S, L, and P inputs. Well, the first input S, S, N. Later, we'll be able to use this also to just be a little more of a universal shift register, both the parallel in, serial out, and uh, serial in parallel out. We'll get to that in a minute. And then, so this output P3 here, we bring down into the serial input. And this output here will be P2. We'll bring that down to the next serial input. And this will be P1. Bring that down. Last serial input. And then that output P0. And we'll have this uh, load signal over here. So. And then finally, we'll have our data that we load. Here's D3, D2, D, it's a D, D1, D0, three. Okay, so what happens? Well, if the, the load signal goes high, goes to one, then we know we're going to multiplexers are going to draw from their P inputs, the parallel inputs. The D3 will go into the input of this flip-flop, D2 to this, D1 to this, D0 to this. When the clock transitions to the high, has a rising edge, then those D3 to D0 values will be latched onto the P3 to P0 value. So that will be the loading process. Load in the parallel data. Then when low go, uh, the, the load signal goes low, then the inputs to the multiplexers come from the S inputs. And so uh, we don't really care what this SN is, 
here because we're just going to go through the four cycles to get all these values to, to cycle out. And our out, we're going to take our output, our serial out is going to come here from the P0. So in that case, right, whatever P3 is, it's going to be and, uh, transferred down to P2. P2 will go down to P1, P1 go down to P0. And then in the next cycle, P2 to P1, P1 to P0, and then P1 to P0. And so we'll take this parallel data then, and one after another, the, the bits will come out, P0 first, then P1, then P2, and P3 will go down the line. Now, if we wanted to, uh, we could with this circuit, let's say we make all the Ds equal to zero, we first you know, load all zeros, and then when it goes to this serial operation, if we put in different bits here, then those would become, that would become a serial in parallel out because these, these values would shift down here and after four shifts, we'd have four different values here in the parallel out. So this would be a universal shift register that could do either SIPO or PISO. Well, let's see how that works. Here is our parallel in serial out shift register circuit. So we've got the four D flip-flops. They're connected so that the output of one becomes the input of the, of the next through a multiplexer. Come back to that in a minute, right? So this would give you the shifting so that this value goes to this flip-flop, then it goes to this, then it goes to this, and that would be the final output that goes into our serial output. Now the multiplexers allow you when this load signal is one, the input comes from the P inputs here. That's parallel. We have these four parallel values. Those then directly go over and get latched into these flip-flops. When the load value goes high, then the input values come from the S or serial input lines. Now we're going to feed zero into this top one so that we just Push zero through here. Um, doesn't matter because that's not going to be part of the data. The, the four, we really are concerned about these four parallel bits going out. And after that, we don't care what happens. Okay. But for this multiplexer and the, these last two also, that's going to allow this Q output to go down and be channeled over here to this D input, which we're to latch. And then that output goes to this multiplexer to this D input and so on. Okay, so let's uh, test this. This is going to be uh, modeled as a chip that has one, two, three, four, five, six inputs, clock, load, and the four parallel datas, and one output. So here is our test circuit. Let's start this up. The, the output value would be completely random. When we initialize it. So let's say we're going to do this uh, one, zero, one, one data from most significant to least significant. So we turn on the load signal and the clock goes to a, a rising edge there and we get the value one here. So this will be P0. Um, now is going to show up as a one at the output. Okay, now we no longer want to load this. We want to do the serial operation. And so on the next cycle, we get a one, that's the P1. Now on the next cycle, we get a zero, that's the P2. And then on the final cycle, we get the one from the P3. So we just, let's go through that again. Load, okay. So on the first cycle, we get the one, we get the next one, and we get the zero, the final one. If we did like, uh, say, zero, one, uh, one, zero, one, zero, coming from most significant to least significant, we would load a zero here. Next cycle, bring in the P1, one. Next cycle, the P2, which is zero. Final cycle, the P3. Okay. So parallel to serial conversion. Now let's look at an interesting application of the EISO and SIPO shift registers combined with a single flip-flop and a single full adder 
We're going to make a serial adder. And this is an example where we can trade off speed for simplicity of the circuitry. We've talked about adders before, right? and um, if we want to have an n, n bit plus n bit adder, we need then add n little adder segments, one bit adders. Uh, but let's take a look at how we can make a four bit adder just using a single full adder and a single flip flop. So our, our Look, it's going to look something like this. Have inputs here, I guess. And let's say this is A3, A2, A1, and A0. Here's our clock. Here's our serial out and here's our load signal another one down here and we'll load our data from the bottom here say b3 b2 b1 and b0 is our clock our serial out and our load right there There's load. There's our clocks. Okay, and then we're going to take this serial output. That's going to be fed into adder. Will be our carry in A value and our B value. Here, down into our A value. Got a carry out and a sum bit coming out. Sum bit's going to come over here into a um, a serial in parallel out. Here will be our serial in data. Get a little bit so we more room. Serial in. And here's our output data for the sum S3, S2, S1, and S0. And then finally, we need a D flip flop. Remember the carry bit from the previous operation. Here's our clock. And up to this guy. Here's our Q output and our D input. So the carry out, we're going to put into the D input of the flip-flop so that we can remember it for the next addition that we're going to do. And this Q value will bring down here and like so. And then let's see, we just need also this one needs to have a clear. Let's just call this LD or compact notation. There's our circuit. Let's see. So what how does this work? The claim is after a certain, certain number of cycles, and this guy needs a clock also, sorry. Certain number of cycles. This, this is a serial in parallel out. These are both parallel in serial outs. So first thing we want to do, we want to assert the load uh, 
a signal. And then on the next rising clock, we would latch in then these A3 to A0 and B3 to B0 values into these parallel and serial out shift registers. We'd also want to assert the clear signal to the, the D flip-flop so that it starts out with a zero value as its output because that's going to represent the carry in from the previous summation. Uh, but we're starting for our first summation. There is no previous summation, so that should be equal to zero. Okay, then we can set those both back down to zero. And then as the clock goes through its cycles, well, what happens? First, we shift out the A0 and the B0. That goes into the adder. The carry in is the output of the D flip-flop, okay, which on the first cycle, it was zero because we cleared it. So you just got A0 plus B0. So that produces a sum bit which goes over here into the serial in parallel out. And the carry out, if any, goes up here into the D flip-flop. Okay, on the next cycle, that carry out bit then appears at the Q output and becomes the carry in. The A1 and the B1 values come out on the serial outputs of the parallel in serial out. So we've got a1 plus B1 plus the carry out value from the sum of A0 and B0. Okay, and then that sum goes over here. And then so then the, the first sum of A0 and B0, that shifts over. And now the new one value shifts in. Okay, and we can just keep, continue that process until we go through and adding all these bits to, and adding in the, the carry out from the previous summation. And then we just shift those all in to the the serial in parallel out shift register and at the end of that we end up with these four bits representing the sum of the four a bits and the four b bits so the beauty of that is we only needed one adder one full adder and one flip-flop and we could have easily extended this if we wanted to add 32 bits plus 32 bits well then we would just have to have a 32 bit parallel in serial out shift register. So let's see how that works in logic circuit. Here is our serial adder circuit. So here are the two numbers we want to add, A and B. So we put those into a parallel in serial out shift register. <clears throat> when the load signal is high, th those values are loaded in. And then as the clock uh, goes through rising edge transitions, those values get shifted out onto the serial out line here. Those two values go in to an, a full adder. And then we have a flip-flop here where the previous carry bit is the D input to the flip-flop. And so for the next cycle, That'll make that carry out bit available to become a carry in. And so we'll have the next pair of bits from A and B with the carry out from the previous at, uh, summation. And then that'll produce the sum bit, which is going to go over here into the serial in parallel out shift register. And so that should then, in uh, you know, for these cycles, we should go through, add the least significant bits to start, then the next most significant bits, and all the way up to the most significant bits. So let's try this out. Let's fire this up. We get random stuff at the output here. Um, let's put that on clear. Let's just clock through to get rid of all those here, those values. Again, we could be a little more elegant and put in some clear signals, but then the circuit would get a little more complicated. We want to just focus on the shift register operation. Let's say we want to add, um, well, let's start off with just two plus zero, very easy. Okay, so let's load. We've got clear here to clear the flip-flop because for the first uh, summation, there's no um, carry in. Okay, so we go through a positive transition. Now we turn off load and clear. Next cycle, next cycle. And now we just, we, we just brought in the, the A1 value. Okay, and it's in the eighth place. Next cycle, it shifts down, and next cycle, it shifts down. Okay, so 
it ends up 2 plus 0 is 2. What if we wanted to do 2 plus 1? Okay, so let's clear here. Let's shift everything out. Oops. Uh, clear everything out. Okay. Now let's load. There we go. We load it in. Turn these two off. On the first cycle, we've got 1 here plus 0 there. It comes over and it gives us a 1 bit. It goes in the 8s place and then that's going to shift down on the next cycle and then we for the next calculation we got the the a1 plus b1 which is 1 plus 0 is 1 that shifts in on the next cycle we've got a2 plus b2 which is 0 plus 0 is 0 goes into the eighths place and the the other two values shift down and then the next cycle they shift down again and now we've got a3 plus b3 which is 0 plus 0 okay and so we get 2 plus 1 is 3 that 2 plus 1 is 3. What if we had like 10 plus 3? That should be 13. So let's, uh, let's first cycle all that stuff out so it's clear what's going on. Load, and now we lock, lock in our A and B values into the parallel inputs. Turn those signals off, and now we can go through 1, 2, three and four. What do we end up with? Eight plus four is 12 plus one is 13. 10 plus three is equal to 13, All right? So in four of these clock cycles, we get our sum. If we made an eight bit version of this, it would be eight clock cycles and so on. So the beautiful thing about this is it only requires one full adder. Um, and the only thing we need to do if we had more bits is just have more parallel inputs to our parallel in serial out, and then more parallel outputs of our serial in parallel out chip over there. Now let's think about if we had a, say a four bit uh, serial in parallel out circuit. I can look at that again. Block. Serial in. B three. One. Okay, and now let's represent that as a single chip here. So we've got uh, one input and four outputs. There's serial in. Uh, I didn't get make that big enough, sorry. B3, E2, E1, E0, and we would also need a clock. Okay. So say we have that, that chip or that block and we wanted to make serial in parallel out but to have eight bits output. So let's uh, here, another one, another one of these chips. All right. So what would we do? We have our, our actual input would come here, say, and then it would, of course, it could fill up these, these four bits, and then we could take this P0, and that could then 
will feed down here to this serial input. And then we'd have this additional four outputs. And now we would want to then consider this really to be P0, P1, sorry, like this, P0, P1, P2, P3, then we really should consider this to be P4, P5, P6, and P7. And now we've got an 8-bit output to our serial to parallel shift register. Let's see if that works in uh, in logic circuit. So here we have two four bit serial input parallel output chips, and we just take the uh, E zero output of one and put that into the serial output uh, serial input of the next one, and we then our, our claim is that this is going to make a an 8-bit serial input parallel output circuit. So let's fire this up. Remember, stuff initializes randomly here. Let's just clock those all, all those values out. Let's irritate. Get rid of that. Okay, here we go. Let's put in uh, one zero one zero right starting. So the least significant digit should be a one, then a zero one, etc. Okay, so one and clock that in. I'll go to zero. Clock that in. One. Clock that in. Zero. Clock that in, one, clock that in, zero, clock that in, one, clock that in, and zero, clock that in. So here we are, least significant bit one, then zero, one, zero, one, zero, et cetera. So indeed, this works as advertised. And so this is another example, which is so common in digital logic circuits, where we can have a, a small function and then just cascade them together to build a bigger function. Yeah, so four bit register becomes an eight bit register. And then you could put two more of them together to get a 16 bit register and, and so on. If we wanted to, we could make this into one, one logical unit, an eight bit register, and then we could combine those little modules. And, you know, so it just makes things simpler for us in our designs. We, at every stage, we want to combine as many things into big blocks as possible so we're never thinking about more than a few components and how to put them together at any one stage in our design.